You ready? Yeah. Where you start? All right, guys. So good morning. So uh, got some time to kill today. Um, since we are, are actually smoking a brisket, it's uh, somewhere back there in the corner. I don't know if you can see it, but we started smoking at six this morning, and hopefully we'll be done by about four thirty. But yeah, it's just me and Mateo today and Kira in the background over there. Uh, so we figured we'd do our Q&A session today and kind of see how that goes. Ready? All right, I think Mateo's ready. All right, let's questions are questions that you guys uh, posted on the comment or on the, the post that I made and then some other questions are just a lot of questions that I usually get when I'm out on the, the water either with like uh, friends or uh, especially clients so one of the first ones uh, how do you say my name so my name is Melo it's actually my first name is E Melo but our nickname is Melo uh, me and my dad my granddad I think my great great granddad uh, we all pretty much have the same name and we all pretty much have the same nickname uh, so it's Mellow M-E-L-O uh, just like Caramello Mellow Yellow um, so yeah that's pretty much how you pronounce it guys pretty easy so uh, next question we get um, do I guide so I, I actually see that obviously a lot on the YouTube comments rather than obviously if I have clients on the boat because if they're clients on the boat then they already know I guide so yes, I, I do guide at the lakes. I guide part-time, usually when I'm off from work. Uh, so before Mateo was born, uh, all of my days off from work, so about twice a week is when I was going to the lake. Uh, and now that he was born, uh, I try and just do one day so I can spend the other day with him. Uh, but yeah, I do guide, I do take clients out there. Uh, typically I'll take out uh, three clients on the boat, uh, depending on the time of year, what we're fishing for. Uh, if it's from like March to say October, Typically, most everybody wants to be, you know, targeting redfish. Uh, sometimes I'll get some clients that want to target some some catfish, and then from November to say March on the bottom end of the year, uh, it'll either be catfish or primarily uh, white bass. So usually around that time, uh, we start getting a lot of requests for white bass out of the rivers, and so that's what we end up going for. So yeah, uh, that's kind of what we do. So next question. Uh, somebody put on there why don't I troll so very good question so a lot of guides at the lake the, the majority of them actually uh, there's only about maybe uh, maybe besides me uh, maybe two other guides that don't troll and and it's nothing to knock trolling or down rigging is usually what it's called uh, down rigging is a very productive way of searching a lot of water uh, the guides they'll, they'll troll uh, throughout the lake. They're they're actively looking at their sonar. They're trying to find the fish, and when they find those schools of fish, man, they can limit out real quick. Uh, all those guides I'm pretty good friends with. I know like TJ, uh, TJ's real good. Uh, Brian, uh, yeah, Bones from Bones Guide Service, uh, Victor, Louie, Harry, Manny, uh, Jesse. I mean, there's so many guides out there, guys. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy how many are out there for just the two lakes. But yeah, most of them will, will troll. So they're actively, you know, pushing the boat, usually about three miles an hour. They're actively using their sonar. They're trying to find the fish. And when they find the school, school it's on, usually. Uh, sometimes they'll still find the fish and just, the fish don't want to eat. And he just threw something. Um, so why don't I like trolling? I don't like trolling because I don't like driving around the lake. So my style of fishing is more... Uh, I like to anchor up and I like throwing baits out on the water whether it be uh, dead bait like you know uh, shrimp or sometimes I'll get some live bait like tilapia so I like anchoring up I like throwing uh, lines out in the water uh, and you know we kind of are waiting for the fish to come to us uh, the thing I do like about it is that when you do tend to get bigger fish um, if you've been following my videos, uh, that fish will take you all over the boat. I mean, it's, it's pulling you from the back to the side to the front. I mean, sometimes you'll do circles around the boat just because that fish is going everywhere. Uh, when you're trolling, uh, the boat's moving a little too fast. So a lot of times all you're doing is just dragging the fish back to the boat. 
Now that's not to say that the fish still won't, you know, dive and the steel is going to pull out line and the steel is going to give you a fight. Uh, it definitely will. But you are fighting not only the fish, but you're fighting the momentum of the boat dragging that fish. Uh, that's just not something that's just for me. I just don't like it. And again, it's not knocking the guides by no stretch of the imagination. I mean, them downrigging, they will, you know, put in more fish easily in the boat than, than I can do. Uh, because they are obviously covering a lot more water. But somebody asked, why don't I troll? And that's why I don't troll. I just, it's not my preferred uh, method of fishing. And, and I just don't like it. Uh, somebody asked about box anchors. Uh, are box anchors a good investment? It's what? Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I just got some box anchors when I got this new boat. Um, still pros and cons. If you end up, I guess, like in real muddy or like sandy water, man, those things work great. They, they hook on real well and you don't slip a whole lot. Uh, the problem I've been seeing in the lake is that if I'm, if I'm in an area that has a lot of gravel, um, it doesn't tend to stick very well. Uh, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but more so than not, especially if there's any kind of wind, um, I do tend to notice that the boat slips. Uh, so box anchors is a good investment. You know, I had some ditch anchors before and, or I think digger anchors, so they got like the two points. I've had those before and it was the same issue. You know, if I was able to get those like in sandy bottom, they held great. Uh, but if I got into an area that had some gravel, it didn't hold so great. So, you know, kind of pick and choose what it is that you want. Uh, so far, I am liking the box anchors. Uh, they don't take up as much room as my digger anchor. My digger anchors were bigger and these are smaller. Uh, and they actually collapse, so when I'm done with them, I can actually fold them up and put them in a, in a bag that they come with. Uh, so, I don't really know if there really is a pro or con to either one. Like I said, uh, I've used both and they both seem to work well in sandy, muddy bottoms and they both seem to not work so well in gravel. So. There you go on that one. Uh, somebody asks if there's any largemouth bass at the lakes. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, do I fish for them? No, I don't. Do I know people that fish for them? Yes, I do. Uh, it's a lot of old timers that I typically will see out at the lake. Uh, for the most part, I don't know their name. I just recognize them from, from faces. Uh, but they do fish the lakes for, for largemouths. And typically when I talk to them, they usually do catch them. Um, and all the times when they're telling me, they're always catching them near, near in the reed beds or near the reed beds. And the only answer I have for that is I just honestly think they're too afraid to come out in the water. Because, uh, you know, in most lakes where bass are probably the top predators, they are not the top predators at, you know, the twin lakes here. The redfish will probably kill them. So I think they do tend to hide a lot. Uh, I don't fish for them. I've tried fishing for them probably twice with my dad and we had like zero luck with it. Um, but like I said, I do have uh, some guys that I see out there pretty frequently, and that's all that they fish for, and they typically always catch uh, largemouth bass. So are they in the lakes? Yes, they are. Uh, so if you want to target them, if you're real good with pitching into like the reeds, I probably would think maybe uh, maybe like a Carolina rig, you know, with a worm, uh, maybe a drop shot, you know, you try it out, and you might get lucky and, and see what you get. But if you do, leave a comment that you caught some out there. Uh, bank fishing, what are good spots for bank fishing at the lake? So at the lake, if you go, you can actually get a map of the lake and it has uh, like all these picnic tables. So anytime you see a table that has a cover, that's a, that's a site that you can rent. Uh, so they have uh, on the map, they'll put numbers on all these spots. So if you're using that map, so table 17 and 18 is a good spot uh, to fish from the bank. Uh, tables four through seven is a good spot to fish from the bank. Uh, if you're at the second boat ramp, so when you go in, you would take a right and there's another boat ramp on the right side, which I don't use. But if you go to that boat ramp, directly off to the, directly off to the side of it is Spider Island. People like that. And it's a point that leads out when, if you were to exit on your boat, it's the very first point. So it's called Spider Island. But then if you just follow that shoreline to the, to the right, uh, I believe they call it the rails. But it's a whole long flat area, pretty much leading up to the, the pier. Um, I hear that's a pretty good spot. Uh, I've never actually tried fishing there myself. Now, a, another spot that I fished at that I've had luck is if you then, if, when you go to the right, you're going to pass it pier and you're going to go as far down as you can until you can't go any further. 
and there will be like one small opening that has some patch of reeds on the on the right and then just big old open you know water on the in front of you and to the left i have fished that spot and i have had luck there uh, the problem is the water's shallow and you have to walk your lines out uh, i will have some waders and i'll walk out and i'm probably walking out about i mean no joke i'm probably walking about 50 yards out and i'm still you know not even to you know the top of my chest uh, but you got to get that deep just to be able to get your lines out uh, in any kind of deeper water. So those are some good areas you can try out. Uh, what, what do I use to winterize my boat? I don't. Okay. I don't winterize my boat, guys, because uh, I use my boat year-round. So unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I never keep my boat in storage. I mean, I think the longest I might go not using my boat might be two weeks. And that's probably going to be because it's weather related. Hey, get your hands out of your mouth, boy. That's why I gave you a pet Come on. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Clear your shot. All right. Uh, are there hybrid stripers at the lake? Yes, there are. Uh, how do you catch them? Well, if you know, tell me. Because I have not caught a hybrid out of there in probably four or five years. Uh, they obviously are not as abundant out there. Um, I saw somebody post a picture, I think like two weeks ago. Uh, I can't remember if it was a guide or not. I think it was just one of my buddies who was fishing. But they're in there somewhere. They obviously are not as abundant. I remember years ago, I, you know, I used to be able to fish. Uh, same thing with just shrimp. And we used to be able to get into some, some pretty good schools of them. But I honestly have not caught one myself in probably five plus years. So are they still in there? Probably. Where are they at? I have no clue. Uh, at Browning Lake, uh, it seems like they're more abundant. Uh, so if you want to try out Browning Lake, uh, but unfortunately I don't fish that lake that often, so I, I couldn't honestly tell you where to look for them there. Okay, so how do I locate redfish? That's a, that's a tricky one. So, so like I said, the guides who troll and I said, so the guides who troll, they're actively trying to use their, their sonar to find the schools. Why well, don't troll? So most of my fishing is pretty much based off of just experience and previous years of knowledge. Um, I'll give you an example. So there's an area near one of the coves that they call Train Car Cove. There's an area near Train Car Cove that I will probably fish in, say, April, May, but I definitely will not try that spot in like July, August, just because the water there is just too hot. So for me, it's just been so many years of me fishing the lake that I have kind of somewhat memorized uh, certain spots. And these are spots that I've also marked on my, on my death finder. But these are spots that I've marked over the years. And depending on the time of year, it's gonna dictate where I start looking for the fish first. Uh, so a lot of times, I mean, I just use my death finder or my fish finder just to find the spot that I want to target and I make sure I anchor up on there and then I you know throw out my lines. Uh, typically if I don't get a bite or even a fish in about 30 minutes I'll move but a lot of times uh, just from that experience usually my first spot or second spot is usually good enough to start finding some fish. Uh, you have a day though like yesterday I had some clients and it took us jumping six times before we finally got into some good fish. Uh, and all the spots that I was checking were all spots that I usually catch in this time of year and just, you know, we weren't catching them. And the last spot that I, we caught them at is normally a spot that I wouldn't even check until, say, mid-October. Uh, and here we are at the end of September. So maybe there's a little bit early in that area, but uh, yeah, that's typically how I try and locate uh, redfish out there. It's just, it's just a lot of memory, a lot of experience, a lot of, you know, I've marked, like I said, uh, certain spots on my map. Uh, during certain times of the year and then just depending on the time of year is, is when I'm looking for them. Uh, you know all the hot spots are usually you know summer you have Corvina Cove, you have 181 Cove, um, you know a lot of times say earlier in the year like say April, May some good spots might be right before you get to the crappie wall uh, there's like a pretty big hump that they call Striper Ridge uh, anywhere kind of like around that hump uh, but you know, sometimes you still gotta just keep bouncing around. Like I said, I have all these spots marked, but uh, sometimes I'll be lucky and the one anchor spot is all that I need to, to get them. And then there's other times, you know, I have to jump five, six, seven times until I finally get into some schools. So that's that's how I locate them. 
you know, uh, I guess if ever you guys are fishing the lake in a certain time of year and, and you want a suggestion as to where to start, feel free to send me a message and uh, I'll try and at least point you in the right direction and see where you go. Okay, and then someone said they have no fish finders, so how do they locate fish? Ooh, that's still a little bit harder. Um, on that one, if you don't have a fish finder, and then depending on the time of year that you're fishing, and I believe this guy said he had a kayak also. So if you're kayaking, you can still kayak without a fish finder, but you probably need to have some baits that dive deep. Uh, so a lot of kayakers, like I'll still see them, uh, they, they head off to like Corvina Cove or 181 Cove, uh, or they go to the telephone pole. And when they get to that spot, typically that's where they'll anchor up. But if you're going to be kayaking, I, just, I strongly would suggest maybe having some, some deep diving baits. Uh, and you probably want to have maybe at least two of them. So one, probably dive down maybe about 10 feet in the water column. And if you have another one that could go, say, 15 to 18 feet down, uh, that might be another good one to try. So at least while you're trolling, you know, you may, you know, hopefully end up getting to some schools. Uh, but again, it's going to be pretty hard if you don't have a fish finder to see. But... After you're done trolling, if you probably do want to try out a spot without a fish finder, I probably would recommend uh, getting semi close to some of the banks out on the back side of the lake, like in those in those coves that I named off. And you know, maybe anchor yourself up in about you know five, six feet of water, which is gonna be hard to tell because you you don't have a fish finder. But I guess you can always just you know drop your lure down, try and count, see how deep you are. But probably anchor yourself out and then just throw a couple lines out into the deeper water. That might help out. Uh, I know I think some of my past several trips, I've actually been anchoring up about four feet of water, but I've been throwing my lines out into the deeper water. And that's kind of where we've been getting our fish. Uh, yesterday, I was anchored in four feet of water, and we were throwing our lines out into the deeper water, and that's where we finally got the last four reds uh, of our trip and that triple that you, you probably would see. So. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's real hard for me to say how do you fish without a fish finder. Uh, it's going to be the same thing, guys, if you can experience. Uh, sometimes, I don't want to say follow the boats because that can be very misleading. Uh, but sometimes you might want to follow the boats. Uh, but that's why I say sometimes it's misleading because I know this, this time, this year especially, there's been several times where I've seen, like in 181 Cove, I've seen like 20, 25 boats in there. And... I see more boats going over there because people are probably heading out and they're seeing and they're thinking like, oh, that's where all the fish are at because that's where all the boats are at. And they go in there and then nobody's catching because the fish aren't there. So kind of hard to say also follow the boats because sometimes that's not the best uh, best advice to give you. Uh, so yeah, I think that's most of the questions that kind of came up on there. So yeah, I guess have any other questions? Uh, yeah. If you have any more questions, I guess uh, feel free to drop a comment and uh, I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Right, Mateo? He's throwing all his toys, guys. He's got no toys on the table anymore. Ha! <laughs> you think that's funny? Huh? You think it's funny to throw your toys? Alrighty. Well, y'all enjoy your day. I gotta finish smoking this brisket. And then uh, I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to the camera. Goodbye to the camera. You Alright guys, see you all later.